Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Now we will be continuing from the time when we have left back. Okay, so here in this particular, uh, you know, session, we are going to focus on finishing this particular cavity. We have already done roughing. If you haven't seen that video, I'll be linking there somewhere in the I button top over here so that you can go ahead and you can watch that video as well. Now, after watching that video, you can come back to this video and we can continue creating the finishing operation for that. In the previous video, we have already covered about, you know, how to do the basic setup, how to create the sketch. And it was something related to planar milling in which you are doing the entire milling operation without a model, okay, technically created here in the software. What you all have is your set of skills and your knowledge to create this particular operation. So now what we are going to do is we have already prepared our tools and everything is all ready. So here I'm going to right click on operation number one. I'm going to click on insert and another operation. And here I'm going to insert the next operation that is going to be my planar profile operation so that I can do finishing. Now, because my previous video was going long, I have cut it off and now I'm going to start with a new video. Now here I'm going to go to tool and I'm going to select the tool that is end mill of 16, which we have already created. And here I'm going to select the method as finishing. Okay. Mill finish. Now by selecting mill rough and mill finish, it changes the tolerances. Okay. So that is the reason I'm changing to mill finishing. Now again, if you want to uh, know more about these things and if you want to suggest me something, you know, on creating some, you know, particular content on NX or on any other software, you can drop it in the comment section below so that I'll be aware what kind of videos you are looking or you are looking for. So here in method, I'm going to select mill finish and I'll click OK. And here again in specify part boundary, I'm going to technically select the curve and here I'm going to select a tangent curve and this is the curve which I'm going to select. My tool is going to be inside this region. Okay. Plane and everything is it's going to be automatic. I'll click. Okay. Okay. So this is my curve, which is going to be ready. Now my floor, it's going to be exactly the same depth. Okay. So it is going to be the same depth as the previous one. So here I'm going to click on specify floor. I'm going to select the top plane, change the button or click on this particular option called reverse the direction. If you have seen the previous video, I've already explained this in great detail. Now what I'm only doing here is I'm just using the planar profile operation. So here I'm going to just define the depth of 30 and I'm going to click OK because in the previous one we have used the depth of 30. Now while doing the cut, I don't want my cutter to lift off every often. So I'm going to go to non cutting move, going to go for transfer and rapid. And here I'm going to use a direct previous plane backup of one mm. Okay. To ensure that the cut, you know, cutter doesn't lift that often. Now here I'm going to rename this operation first. Okay. So I'm just going to rename this operation as operation number two and finally generate this. Okay. So technically you can see it is creating a single cut at the very bottom. Now there is a mistake which I have done. Okay. That is the reason it is creating a single cut at the very bottom. That is I have not defined depth of cut. So here if I go to the main again, like I'm editing this operation here, you can see depth of cut and here I have to define, let's say I want to cut it with a depth of 0.5 mm every cut. So I will just make it 0.5 and then click on generate so that now we will have multiple tool paths. Okay. And again, we have done all the settings correctly. So the cutter is not going to lift very frequently and it is going to actually machine that leftover material. So here I'm going to reduce the speed first and hit the play button. Now the tool is coming machining that leftover 0.2 mm of material. So to achieve a better finishing. Okay. And this is how it's going to, you know, achieve it. So this is how it's going to machine the entire pocket and mind you, it is not a through pocket. It is a pocket with a depth of 30 mm. Okay. And now once this particular part is done, then what I'm going to do is now I'm going to create something for this particular part. And if you have, if you remember, I have already created a ball cutter. Okay. If you remember, I have already created a ball cutter. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat the same exact step, but with a different geometry, with a different cutter. So you will have a greater idea about how to do this again. So again, I'll take it very slow. I'm going to right click on the second operation, which I just created. Then I'm going to click on insert another operation. I'm going to choose the same exact thing that is mill planar. And I'm going to choose this option called planar profile operation. And here I'm going to select the tool, which is going to be my ball cutter. Now here in geometry, it's going to be workpiece. in method. It's going to be mill finish. And here this will be named as operation number three so that I don't have to rename it later on. Now what I'm going to do is in specify part boundary, I want my cutter to run over this path or on this path. So what I'm going to do is in specify part boundary, I'm going to click on this option called select or edit part boundary. Then I'm going to select the curve. Then I'm going to change the selection rule to tangent curve. And then I'm going to select this curve over here. 
Now I don't want my tool to be either inside or outside. I want my tool to be on the curve. So I'm going to choose anything over here that doesn't really matter. Okay. But here in the bottom, the things are going to be very important here. You can see there are total of eight members. So I'm going to select all eight members by pressing the, by selecting the first member and then pressing the shift key on the keyboard and selecting the last member. So here we have all the eight members selected. You can do it the way you want to. And here in tool position, rather than tangent to the member, I'm going to select on the member. So all the, the cutter, what is going to do it is going to remain on the path rather than touching to the part from the side or tangential to the path. So here I have already defined it should be on the member, not touching the member. So now once this particular part is defined, I'm going to click OK. Now here in specify floor, because my cutter is of 10 mm radius, I'm going to define the cut depth by selecting this, changing the reverse direction, making it 5 mm deep. So I'm going to go 5 mm deep and I want to cut it, you know, let's say 0.5 mm at a time. Okay. And after every cut, I don't want my cutter to lift off that high. So I'm going to use direct previous plane backup of 1 mm, the same exact thing. And then I'm going to click on generate. There will be a problem and we'll see that. Now here I have created an operation on which the tool is directly running on that path. Now what is going to happen is if I zoom in over here and if I use this particular part that is showing you the workpiece, I'm going to select this operation, display the workpiece in process workpiece, reduce the speed and click on play. So technically it's going to create an operation like this. So it's going to create a cutting path like this. And finally it created a proper, you know, cut over here. Now the problem here is this part, the entry and exit, as you can notice. Okay. As you can notice the entry and exit is not really perfect. Why? Because it is entering away from the curve and exiting away from the curve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this operation, going to go for engage. Okay. And here I'm going to use this option called same as close. And I'm going to keep the close area as plunge. Okay, I'm going to keep the close area as plunge. So once my plunging is decided, then I can define the plunge height and all other parameters if I so wish to. And then I'm going to click OK. So this will ensure that the cutter doesn't move right and left. It just plunges over that line. Okay, if you want, you can also have ramping over that line. Okay, that can be also done. But for now, plunging is good to go. Okay, and then I'm going to click on verify again. I'm going to play it again and see how this particular operation is going to look like. And this is what all I wanted. Okay. And it looks good. So that is how you can create a simple cutting operation just by using a 2d sketch. Okay. You can create the shape just by using a 2d sketch. Let's go for a proper verification. I'll go for verify toolpath. I'll go for 3d dynamics. I'll reduce the speed and hit the play button. So this is the first most operation which is happening. Okay. And then this is the second operation, which is removing off that remaining material. And finally, this is the third operation creating that, you know, proper cut over there on the side. So I hope you enjoyed this particular set of sessions. Okay. And I hope you understood most of the things. Okay. So thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you have watched so far. Okay. And please suggest me in the comment section below of what type of videos you want to see next inside NX. Okay. So thank you very much for watching. Have a great day ahead. Meet you for the, meet you in the next one.